J, Chai Suksuri, Product Specialist, ISS. Today, I want to show you how to program Tools Talk 2. So let's go take a look. Today, we're going to talk about the Configurations tab in Tools Talk 2. So I'm going to. So you can click on Add right here, and you can see different types of configurations. From top to bottom, we'll go one by one. Most of the stuff on the top are repetitive, and there's some unique stuff. So we'll start right away. So for the internal I.O., you can see this is similar to the inside of your controller. This is how you, you know, plug in different inputs and outputs. And now this is where you configure it. For example, um, for input, I might want to select different presets from this, which you will have to use select input bit 0, select input bit one and make sure your inputs are binary so you can select the correct programs for output i can say okay if i have a tiny okay we'll send a signal out and we could configure the signal itself how long it'll be the duration until next tining and do we want it to pulse as a signal or just a long signal and another one just an example could be tiny not okay. Oh, I just saw this. I actually set up as losing, but you know the idea. It's actually going to be tightening okay. That's all. Next, um, we're gonna set up the IO expander. Like what I said, it's repetitive. The only difference is you have much more outputs and inputs, and the setup would be the same. So we're not going to go through that. Then the operator panel. This is more unique. In the operator panel, you can set up different lights. And on, um, as you can see, it's pretty intuitive. It's selling you A, B, C, D, E, F, and so on. On K here, it's a display, it's a number display. And on T, it's a buzzer. Let's try some examples here. On A, I said, okay, this is gonna be my green lamp. And of course, on a green lamp, you want it to be something that's relevant. So same thing, it could be a tiny okay. And this is similar to our um, input output um, configuration we show earlier. But let's see something more unique, such as K, which is the um, result. Small display on K right here. You see it's a display. And I see I want to see the batch count. And then what is the activation signal would be from the batch running. Now the buzzer itself, I say I want the output to be when there is a batch not okay. So it matches um, my setting right here. And if you scroll up, you see what is enabled. In this case, the light and this um, counter right here and the buzzer. So that's the example of operator panel. What we have more is a stack light. This is another unique option. So you can pick and choose what different stack lights you, you want here because you might configure um, the colors differently. Let's, let's have an example. Same thing. Let's start from green, yellow, and red. So we need a green. Same thing. It's a, it's a tiny OK. The yellow could be sort of a, a tool ready. Let's see what kind of signal I have to look for. Here you go, ready to start. We might want it to pulse. And a red lamp could be a tiny not okay. Let's see right here. I could also configure my key switches and my buzzer as well. So on B, I said it's pretty intuitive, it's easy to see. For B, I said this is my key switch right here. So it's a two-way key switch. If I turn left, it's going to be abort sequence. 
If I turn this to the right, it could be unlock tool here, unlock tool on complete or unlock tool on disable. So when your tool is disabled and you turn the key switch, your tool is unlocked. Okay, let's see what is the next option. Tool configuration. This is really important. So as you know, the PF6000, you can connect up to six tools and the PF8 much more. Um, and this is a generic tool configuration. If I start selecting filter by tool type, you will have much more or less configurations. So, okay, now it's not filtered. You can see there's a tag check, which this is unique to only for ST wrenches. Or you have this inactivity timeout, which is unique to battery tools. So I say, okay, I'm gonna select a cable tool. And you'll see we have much less and much more clear options. So I say, okay, to start, um, do I wanna start with the trigger or trigger and push because it might be sort of a safety? Um, or I said, okay, this is a remote start. So I wanna use a digital input. This is one of the classic um, questions. They say, oh, Jay, um, I don't see any traces in Toolnet. So remember, you'll have to use, you'll have to configure the trace start right here from trigger press. And now your tool will start collecting traces for the PF6 or PF8 or any controller. And you can configure your function button. What are you gonna do when you press counterclockwise? You could activate tool scanner, master unlock, and so on. In this example, I'm gonna use master unlock. Directional switch, there's a configure button as well. I can do a part sequence as an example. And let's see some more interesting stuff. You can configure the tool LED. So okay, if the green light is steady, same thing. It could be, it could be hanging okay. Green flashing could be tool ready, such as tool help, okay? No, tool enable would be better. You can also set the buzzer for different signals. You could add here and set different buzzer configurations. And one thing interesting is the accessory bus. You could set the eHMI. This is pretty simple, but let's see something more interesting such as the scanner. Scanner pass through mode, what is this? If the pass through mode is on, means we're sending the scanner barcodes to a field bus to decode or you know an external source to decode. If it's off, it means the decoding will be done in the controller. So that's all for tool configuration. Let's see more unique stuff we might have to configure. I think this is important, the general virtual station. In the general virtual station, you can configure the basics of your virtual station, hence the name, such as all the non-timing results. Do you want losing to be reported? Do you want all the stuff to be reported? Or some classic timing settings, such as you say you want to disable Timing when you're done after every cycle, your tool is disabled and you need a signal to unlock it. And this is some live result set. So if this is turned on, you'll see your PRT compensation on your result screen live. Or default is show torque with PRT compensation. So if this is on by default, it will show the compensation at the end. So I think that's it because the other last two options is pretty repetitive with what we've shown before. So for example, if I click on scanner, it's similar to a tool scanner, which we discussed already. So that's it. So that's it on this video for Tools Talk 2. I hope that was helpful. If you have any more questions, please contact your local LS Copco representative. Thanks for watching. <laughs>